Good afternoon, my friends, and welcome to this episode of Happiness After Codependency. I'm Marshall Bircher, and I'm your guide into coming, coming into knowing, loving, and being who you are, which is how we heal codependency. Today, we're going to be talking about how self-trust amplifies healing and the role it plays in making healing real and stable for us and allows us to succeed and grow further in our progress and what we're discovering as we emerge from codependency and from trauma and from trigger states and that kind of thing. So that's what we're going to be showing or discussing today. But before we get to that, I need to share this out real quick to the community. The community is your safe haven where you can find guidance, support, and tools in your journey in coming to knowing, loving, and being who you are. You can find a link above on Facebook, below on YouTube. Please read the rules before applying to join as the group is a very different kind of group on the on the internet, on the Facebooks. And we have a very specific structure that allows us to have a safe container and communicate and connect with each other in an effective way. So check that out above. I'm going to hit the share button here to the group real quick. Now let's see here. Because Facebook likes to move things around. So we got that. And now we're going to have another one. And uh, let's see. Share to this group. <laughs> oh, things that matter in our world, right? All right, let's jump in here. Also, stick around for an uh, update on the enrollment that's going on with the self-trust course. So, self-trust and how it amplifies your healing. So my journey with healing started out with the, I'd say the classic or typical approach to healing, which was, I'm going to fix the feelings. I'm going to fix the pain. I'm going to get rid of it so I don't ever have to feel it again. And that was my big nosedive into the pool of trying to fix myself and confusing that with the experience of healing. Fixing doesn't work, obviously. If it did, most of us wouldn't. Why well, you wouldn't be here, right? <laughs> so... What's really going on there in fixing is we are acting out our emotionally avoidant response to our emotions and to our pain. We are demonstrating what we have learned from others about how to respond to emotions, to pain, to desire, and to want. So a lot of times this avoidant approach or this, this approach of deeming something we feel as wrong, bad, or shouldn't be there or shouldn't be this way leads us into trying to create emotional perfectionism by eliminating that emotion or trying to eliminate it. Now, this is one of the, the healing fantasies we come with. It's not necessarily contingent to codependency. Uh, it shows up in other areas. But it's a fantasy we have about healing is that, okay, I'll get rid of this and I'll never feel it again. A lot of times... That's what we're trying to get to is this utopia, this idealized state of not having this kind of pain, this kind of emotion again. Real healing, that's not what that's about. And a lot of times in our healing journey, uh, distrust in ourselves, self-doubt is running in the background. So we're trying things out, we're trying tools, we're trying to make things work, and then we doubt our effort, we doubt the effectiveness of the tool, we doubt that it... Um, that it's ever really going to work for us, that I can actually heal. We doubt that it's not going to work the way it worked for others. Like we are an exception to this rule, um, that it, we are going to have to do something harder than what other people had to do, things like that. These are really common beliefs that show up in that journey. It's beliefs that I've dealt with, beliefs that I have lived with on my own healing journey. And so we got self-doubt, and then we have this idealized or emotional perfection showing up and trying to dictate what healing should be, what outcomes we should be getting, and then determining that that's not happening because when we look at reality, that's not occurring, and so we're not healing. And this is where we tend to collapse into despair. We can collapse into resignation, hopelessness, and frustration with it. We also tend to do in this kind of fixing dynamic, we bounce from tool to tool to tool. We don't stick with a process long enough for it to really make an impact on our body and on our neurology and our nervous system. 
And a lot of times that's because we're not being guided in a way that needs, that, that facilitates rather, a proper containership of our pain and helping us get access to it, helping us begin to acknowledge it, bring it some legitimization, treating it as real and valid to you, and then learning how to bring warmth into that pain. This is what real healing is. Real healing is, is about bringing warmth and soothing to pain, care to pain, so that over time it reaches a homeostasis state. It can become relaxed. It can find peace. It can integrate. And through that, we are growing emotionally. We are growing neurologically. We are maturing through this process of coming more into alignment and kindness and congruence with our emotions rather than a judgment, a condemnation, or some sort of meaning or significance we have around the pain that we feel. Instead of making it wrong, we are allowing it to be real and valid and legitimate. So we got our fixing habit, and then in this healing habit that I'm talking about, it's coupled with self-trust. So self-trust in this aspect is about, it starts first with acknowledging the legitimacy of the emotional experience you've had, of the sensations in your body, of what you have lived through. When we trust in that legitimacy, that it's real, that it's valid, that I don't have to fix this, I don't have to get rid of it, there's not something wrong with me, this allows us to open up to the experience we're having and become an ally to ourselves. This welcomes in care, kindness, compassion for what we're feeling. Because it's like, yeah, I'm feeling this because I've gone through something. I'm feeling this because of what I've lived through. I'm feeling it because of what I've not had in my life. So I have the neglect component and we have the trauma component there in it. We are navigating this experience of reality for us from kindness, from care, from warmth, because we value the pain. That's one of the, the key shifts when we start to trust the legitimacy of our pain and our lived experience. We start to value it. We start to treat it with, with worth. We start to see that my pain matters here. It's not something I need to get rid of. It's something I need to care for so that I can learn how to soothe it how to nurture myself through this. And when I am learning about nurturing myself through my pain, I'm also learning how to let others nurture me through my pain. I'm learning how to ask for what I need. Do I need companionship? Do I need a little humor? Do I need a gentle touch? Do I need someone to listen? Do I need someone to believe me? Do I need someone to hold space or shelter for me? Be with me for a moment in this. This is what we're learning. We're learning how to ask that from others, and we're learning how to provide it for our inner aspects of self, our inner child, so to speak. This is what healing is about. So healing is not to eliminate pain. Healing is to soothe pain and allow us to grow into a, a more healthy, more loving, more warm connection with ourselves and with others. Now, let's see here. I've got a little thing here. The thing about healing as well, when we're in distrust, we aren't available to see our progress because we have an idealized state that we're trying to accomplish. Oh, I'm not there yet, so nothing I've done, none of the effort I've put in matters. We get critical with the small gaps we might see in our healing. Like, yeah, something's changed, but it's not that big of a deal. We don't value it. We don't praise it. We don't appreciate it. We don't even acknowledge that little gap. But here's the thing with healing, because we're dealing with the nervous system. We're dealing with neurology. We're dealing with the way the body reacts to pain, to trauma. These things will move slowly. The reason why it moves slowly is the body is continually checking its level of safety in the changes it's experiencing and comparing that to what the environment is doing in response to that change. That's how it's going to determine Safety, that's its goal there. It's, uh, it's a practice of the way the brain gauges those things. It's important to understand this. These small gaps that we start to notice, like, well, 
I'm not feeling it as intensely today. It's like it used to be a 10 and today it's an 8. That doesn't mean if tomorrow it's, it comes up to a 10, that doesn't mean that you haven't made progress. It does mean you've made progress because the fact that it went down to an 8 means you can get back to an 8 again and then maybe down to a 6 or to a 4. This is how the body adapts to changes while dealing with its state of uncertainty and unsafety. It's trying to adapt, maintain safety, while adapting to the environment with its changes. So little gaps matter a lot because those are leaps of faith. They are courage in action for yourself and for your own well-being and happiness there. So this is the trick here. When we come from self-trust, we are able to access curiosity and go, well, what am I noticing that is different for me in my world and internally, my own uh, emotional or internal experience? My, uh, is it less intense? Do I find more space around that sensation? Do I find myself thinking about or doing other things a little more? Do I, am I willing to take risks, even small ones? to do something different and experience something new. The gap, that's what matters. So we're checking in internally. I can be curious about what I see changing in my world. And then I can identify it. I can praise it. I can appreciate it. And that amplifies it. Because when I trust that that gap is enough, like, wow, yeah, I made a change here. I can build on this. We are teaching ourselves how to learn and how to grow and how to deal with uncertainty, how to deal with that unknown that we're facing. This was crucial for my own healing because I come from the fixing background. Oh, got to get rid of the feelings. Got to not have that pain. And I had to evolve into this experience of organic connection and warmth with myself and self-trust and trusting in those gaps is what's gotten me to where I am today where I don't have panic attacks. I mean, I, I grew up with panic attacks. <laughs> I had them eight to ten times a day at their peak when I was in my 20s. It was terrifying. I don't have chronic, constant anxiety. I have bursts of it. But then I have these beautiful moments of silence and peace and care. I don't feel arrested by triggers all the time. I still have some. Still working on those because it's all about progress. It's all about discovery. But I know what to do when those things show up. I've learned how to give my body the time and space it needs to move through its own emotional rhythm around the events it encounters. This is real healing. Some things will take a long span of time. Some things will move very quickly for you. Neither of those are indicators of anything significant about um, doing it right. Instead, those are indicators about the necessity of safety in that journey. Some parts of you are going to need a lot more safety, so that's going to take a lot more time. And some parts are like, I'm safe, we can make this leap, and they do. My friends, this is how we heal. This is how we care for ourselves and our, heal, our healing, because we respond with warmth, we respond with curiosity, we acknowledge what's there, we legitimize it, and then we allow ourselves to connect with and be gentle with it, just like we are gentle with others, just like we would be gentle with a child, just like we'd be gentle with people we care about. And a lot of times, for me, I'll do a cradle, like a, this is a container hold, and I will sense into where my the pain is in my body while I do this, and then I will visualize that pain as a small version of me and I'm holding him and I'm rocking him and I'm here. I'm here with him. I care about him. I love him. I adore him. This is what I do. And I started this process. It was not an easy thing. I did not like myself. I didn't, I had a lot of resentment and judgment towards myself. And so I started there. I'm like, well, yeah, of course I've got judgment and resentment. I don't like myself. I, Parts of me feel like I've caused myself an enormous amount of pain in my life. I feel like I haven't been able to do this. I feel like I don't deserve this. I, I shouldn't have gone through what I went through. All of that needed an enormous amount of legitimization and care. And while I was doing that, I started with this practice. And I learned this from my mentor. 
and we would rock. And I'm like, I just am so angry. I'm so tired of this. Why am I this way? I'm like, yeah, yeah, we are hurting. We've been judged. We've been excluded. We have been condemned for the way we feel and what we've gone through. Of course we're feeling this. Over and over. And that part started to melt and soften up and really emerge into the pain, the hurt that he had endured. And that started to integrate. I started to find that I didn't feel that way towards myself so much anymore. Instead, I, I started to feel a warmth internally, like this love and this appreciation and this respect for the parts of me that, for all of me that's there. When the shame showed up, I embraced that with warmth. I'm like, yeah, well, we feel shameful. We've been taught to feel shameful in this. We're supposed to be perfect, huh? Yeah, like, yeah, we're supposed to be perfect. I started to give it legitimization that way, to validate it, to treat it as real and treat it with respect. And that allowed a deeper cultivation of this. One way I amplified this is I'd make eye contact with myself in a mirror. And then I would do this in response to that. I still do it today. I was doing it this morning. So this is ways that I have nurtured an intrapersonal connection with myself to bring that warmth. And then I have asked others to hold space for me. I have said, hey, this is what's going on. Can I share with you that thing? And they hold space. They physically hold me. They comfort me. And these are platonic relationships that would do this for me. And then when I've gone into romantic relationships, I've developed that there as well. This is the skill of healing. Because healing is not about getting rid of the pain. It's about soothing and growing. Discovering who we are beyond what we're going through while caring for what we're going through. It's a very gentle, slow, delicate process because that's what you need. That's what matters here. That's what makes the difference. So... That's why self-trust matters in your healing, is it gives you the capacity to connect with your real experience, bring respect to that experience, and then witness the changes that slowly sometimes or quickly sometimes emerge. This is how we heal. At least that's my experience with it. So, my friends, I'm going to teach you, I'm going to start you in that process of healing in the self-trust course helping you begin to touch into the legitimacy of your lived experience, of your reactions, and then through titrated practices, start to regulate, contain, and hold as we move into a deeper aspect of learning how to care for ourselves. That's what we do there. The enrollment's open uh, till this Saturday. We've got 20 seats left in the course itself and then you've got five seats left in the happiness of the codependency system which is the big journey in this work so go check that out link is above on facebook below on youtube we start this monday 6 a or 6 6 p.m and 11 a.m and 6 p.m mountains daylight savings time so come join us go gently with yourselves in this process go kindly in this i know it can be really rough I know there can be a lot of conflicting emotions, a lot of frustration around it, because we're in pain, and we're tired of being in pain. Sometimes we're tired of having to do all the work, right? Where's the people that hurt us? Why aren't they taking ownership or caring for us in this too? Valid and legitimate things, things I have encountered, things that I have wrestled with, they are normal, they are part of the journey, and they're all valid. So go gently with this, go kindly with yourself in this, and then I will see you guys in our next training video, okay? Okay, see you later, guys. Bye-bye.